My thanks to the executive committee for breaking with our tradition of just having the executive, executive committee typically present these awards. This one is very special and personal to me because this is somebody who I have learned from immensely, who has truly shaped and um, helped form my leadership of Shape America. So the Hall of Fame Award honors outstanding individuals who make significant contributions to maintaining physical and health education, physical activity, dance, and sport as important parts of the total education program. This year, we are pleased to present the Hall of Fame Award to Tom Lowry. professionals who formed this organization as it is and our practices in serving the constituents and young people in this country. I would like to list the names, but again, the list is far too short. Many of you are in here. Where have we been in a profession and what lies ahead? I've seen the beginning of the physical fitness movement with the first National Youth Fitness Test in 1959, the emphasis on sport, and now the beginning of lifestyle and meaningful physical education. A great
great privilege was serving on the National Outcomes Committee from 1986 to 1992 with six other professionals who were just, every time we met, it was like a three-hour doctoral seminar crammed into a weekend. <laughs> and we were proud of the work that we've done, and now we've seen how that's evolved and moved forward. <clears throat> As I reflect on what I've been a part of and what I've seen develop, there are sad memories as well as hope for the future. Our profession became divided when many of the professionals who provided great research and justifications for our program left to establish their own North American Society of this, that, and something else. Teachers now need to encounter varied learning styles and interests and have constantly been forced to battle to even keep minimal time requirements for their program. Yet, so many teachers do not embrace the necessary professional development in growing, serving, and advancing our profession. Think of the people in your states who are not here, who are not a part of your state organization, who are not a part of Shape America. They're the ones who we have to reach somehow. That we have not as a profession captured meaningful data to demonstrate our impact on students, schools, and communities is a major disappointment. My generation of physical educators must not have significantly educated our young people in what a healthy lifestyle is and how to achieve it. The growth of commercial gyms and personal trainers reflects a, uh, reflects an experience uh, of failure on the part of myself and others to not educate the young people in lifestyle factors so that they should be able to be their own personal trainer. To me, that is a failure of our profession. Yet, failing to adequately prepare students for lifestyle providing long-term embedded behaviors will keep our profession from gaining the public health support that is possible. That our society needs personal trainers to me is an indication of lessons not learned in our programs and is what I refer to as remedial education. Failure to adequately provide protective factors may be a reason for all too many health-related issues in society, many of which lead to premature death and the enormous economic cost associated with this. I want to give you examples of three experiences I've had. And it's not to pat myself on the back because I was a collaborator. I didn't do any of this totally by myself. From 1987 to 2013, I was one of two people that created a student-led high school wellness promotion program. We involved 10 students from each of 75 high schools in the St. Louis metro area. That's 750 high school health promoters. Each team promoted nutrition, drug-free living, healthy sexuality, personal efficacy, and physical activity. We received major funding from five St. Louis-based national corporations. <laughs> Further, each high school team was paired with volunteers from these corporations and with hospital personnel. Because we <coughs> documented the impact on students, their schools and their communities, we had an annual budget from these corporations of $250,000. Our impact report at the end of the session was almost a thousand pages long, showing the effect that they had in their schools, in their communities. During the 2007-2010 school year, the Ferguson Florissant School District received one of 20 PEP grants. Because Laura Beckman was able to submit year-end reports that demonstrated policies that affected school culture and student learning, this district was the only district of the 20 to receive full funding for the final year. Collected data. At the end of that, 
when she presented the report to the Board of Education on June 1st of 2010, the board gave her a standing ovation. And the result, the health and PE budget became the number one funded budget in the, in the district. And finally, the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education was granted one of the initial 1801 grants from CDC. Once again, as grant director, Laura Beckman provided evidence of impact from the use of the funds annually, showing policy and program initiatives. In the new round of funding, Mo Healthy Schools, Google that, Mo Healthy Schools, was awarded $8 million for the next five years. If you want to have support, you have data and you demonstrate the impact. That is the message. Each of you in your own school, district, or university has the ability to define important data to collect and share with administrators and the community. When you do this, there will be positive results. Among the many signs of hope and renewed priorities for our Shape America's mission and successful accomplishment, <clears throat> we can point to the renewed emphasis on teaching to standards as well as envisioning the more appropriate linking of physical education and health education. Not physical education, slash. Physical education and health education. In a society portrayed as far from ideal, in adopting personal protective factors for a healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> it is increasingly important for us to begin early and regularly reinforce those knowledges and skills associated with a health-enhancing lifestyle. While knowledge and skill development are important, when these learnings are not connected to individual and family applications in a variety of contexts, the lessons lack credibility. Full attainment of expected outcomes is predicated on appropriate assessment and reporting processes. If we truly want to be accepted as contributors to the whole school, whole community, whole child outcomes, we must be able to validate our programs with data demonstrating connections to our mission that has an impact on schools, students, and public health outcomes. It's been an honor to work with you people for 62 years. I would like to start fresh with the ideas that are generating right now <laughs> and really make some changes. It's up to you people, best wishes, and thank you to Shape America and especially to Stephanie and the Mo Shape people. Can't be without you. <laughs>